Tau overflows. Only factual and psychological memory remains. There is no spiritual memory when you pass from one life to another. Two things go with you. Your spiritual being and your psychological memory. Your factual memory is left far behind. The question is not that a psychoanalyst should listen to you. The question is that you should believe that he is listening to you. That is what helps you. If the psychoanalyst listens to you, he may become psychologically involved, then it is tiring. Then he may carry it over into the night. He wants to sleep. But what he has been listening to and thinking about is not complete yet. So he has to go on thinking unless his whole mind is satisfied. Everything is complete. Sleep will not come. There are two aspects of it. The disciple, the seeker, the person can do it on its own without the help of psychoanalyst. Then he will not be going into the high fee for the psychoanalyst. Or if the master listens to you, he can completely detach himself from the moment. It appears to you that he is listening, he is very attentive, but deep down the words do not reach. Such thing is not possible for a psychoanalyst. He gets involved in anything that he listens to. On the first part the seeker can do it on his own without affecting anyone. This is known as catharsis. Catharsis has certain parts, certain process, certain ways to go into. Number one, if I have to bring out something out of you, you are looking very tranquil, like the lake that surface is quiet. There is no disturbance. I have to throw a piece of a stone into it. And with that, the inner disturbance surfaces. Then I will sit down on the shore and watch you do the catharsis as the lake water does. So in this first, to accrivate activate your energies then when the energies is, are activated immediately the catharsis begins but it does not transform you every day we encounter situation in such a way that someone says something and you start saying things which are not needed at that moment, called for at that moment, but this does not transform you. If you convert this entire process as meditation, then every step will work. Osho has developed this technique into a dynamic meditation. Five steps followed by music, First, you have to aggravate your energy and that can only be done through chaotic breathing. Chaotic breathing happens if I tell you, you are a damn idiot. Now, this will trigger your energies to get aggravated, activated and 
you will start saying things how do you say so what makes you say so you think i am like that and things like that begin catharsis begins if you are conscious of this process then <laughs> the second part you will and that time when there is a bout of anger <clears throat> expressing itself there is a movement of the body the movement of the gestures words everything combined together starts the way of expression this is known as catharsis you are releasing what has been brought to the surface through the chaotic breathing this is one aspect releasing the negative energy in order to generate the positive energy you have to work on your solar plexus hammer it as deeply as possible in that the solar plexus which generates the energy conserves the energy and distributes the energy this is positive energy after that when energy is developed in you then it has to be distributed the very nature of energy is the it moves out through the ends of the nerves so then in the next stage you freeze completely energy is generated you want it to be conserved and not to be uh, going anywhere or release from the body system then you freeze thereafter when all this happened then you have to thank the existence so these five steps comprise the dynamic meditation mind is created by the identification of your being with the brain there are two things brain and mind it is epiphenomenal certainly it has no existential reality brain has an existential reality it is like a bio computer a perfectly good mechanism but when your being becomes attached to the brain attached to the brain a third entity comes into existence which is the epiphenomenon it comes only out of identification with the brain that is why all the great masters have been insisting on disidentifying yourself with whatever goes on in your brain there is no way to dissolve the mind no other way otherwise the fog of the mind will follow your spirit wherever you go and that happens that is why it is possible to remember it is possible to remember your past lives but the remembrance is only psychological there is no factual fact in it so you cannot depend on it really being true it may be it may not be because you make so much fuss about the small things psychologically your remembrance will carry that exaggeration the fact is no longer there and there is no way to find how long you have been exaggerated it how long have you been exaggerated it so people who remember their past lives either by an accident a freak of nature or through certain techniques which take you back into your past lives should not depend on what they remember it it is psychological impressions which may be correct or which may not be correct may not be 
the fact the fact the fact factuality is not proven but they can cannot be absolutely right masters have studied many cases because they happen only more in india than anywhere else in other countries where christianity islam judaism are predominant the very conditioning prevents people from remembering their past lives the conditioning means christianity islam and judaism believe in only one life but in india all three religions agree only on one point that is mahavir jain buddhism and sanatan they agree on one point that is reincarnation so that so there is no conditioning against remembering your past lives you can whatever nature whatever nature creates is a barrier so that you do not get crazy one life is enough and if you remember two or three lives that you have been passing through hundreds of lives you are going to be crazy one life is enough to make you insane one spouse is enough and when you remember hundreds of lives you will remember the spouses as well and all the torture that you have gone through and all the failures and the humiliations all the diseases and all those deaths and pains it will be unbearable for you hence the natural process is that after each life it is as if the door closes and it does not allow the past life's memory to infiltrate into your life but sometimes there may be some accident there may be some freak of nature or if somebody is himself trying to break the barrier then there are techniques to break it in mahabharat there comes an episode in which draupadi gets married to five brothers it was something not acceptable so it was asked how are you going to live with five husband she said i will live with one for one year after that one year i will go into austerity and because of that austerity i will forget completely dissolve everything that relationship so when a new relationship begins for the next year with another brother then i will be totally free the memory will not be there of the life that has been lived with one of the brothers this is not possible for everyone you cannot in this life you have many relations you before you clear up the memories of the one relationship you enter into another that is why those who are moving from one spouse to another i have suggested them to go into a particular meditation to remember the moments of bliss which and keep on remembering this but we only remember the moments which had caused pain and suffering in a particular relationship this is a totally a, a, a technique of meditation that i have invented to explain and to for the people to follow before they move one relationships to another enough for now